Hey folks, hope you're okay. Welcome back to the gym. We are in a new setting and we are going to be starting with another training tip Tuesday here in this gym. Now, this week we're going to be looking at the back squat. We're going to look at how to perform the back squat. We're going to look at the movement classification. We're also going to look at like technique, rep ranges, and we're also going to look at common errors as well. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, I want you to go ahead and give the video a like. Make sure you share it on social media. If you're listening on the podcast, I want you to leave us a rating and review. And if you're checking us out on social media, go ahead and like the video, but then also come over on onto the podcast or YouTube and kind of check out the content on a visual or audio level as well and we're going to go through everything I'm going to get nice and warm and if you've got any comments questions or concerns make sure you post them down below and I can get back to you with any content so let's get to it and then we'll get into that movement classification right folks so the first one we're going to be looking at is hip flexion okay so hip flexion is basically at the start of the movement when we're squatting down we're going to break at the hips and we're going to go into this flex position here so we're primarily looking at the front of the hips so we're flexing back as we go down this is primarily going to look at the hamstrings the glutes and the lower back as well so if you've ever done any hip extensions kind of the, the glute bridges or anything we're looking at hip extension the flexion part is as we're going down so you can see here that we're going to break at the hips we're going into this position here and the hamstrings, glutes and the lower back are starting to activate. Now the opposite to this is the hip extension. So as we start the movement on the way up, as we get towards the top position, the hips are driving forward, which is the extension. So again, the glutes, the hamstrings and the back are all working to bring us forward into that hip extension position here. So again, the hip flexion is as we go down and we break into that position. So we've got the hamstrings, the glutes, and the lower back taking the tension. On the way up to the top position, we're driving that bar up in the squat, and we're flexing, we're extending, should I say, back to the top, and we're driving those hips forward. Okay, so we've got the hip extension and the hip flexion there. Okay, so we've got hip extension and hip flexion. Now we've got to look at the knee extension and knee flexion as well. So looking at the knee flexion here is where we're going to be starting the position in the squat and we're going to be lowering down. The knee is starting to flex here as we get into that bent position. So typically we will see that the legs will start straight like we would with the squat and the knee is going to close that gap and we're going to flex in here. Okay, so starting again from the top, we're going to flex in and then we're going to obviously going to that squat position as we start flexing here okay the opposite to that is the extension so we're going to be in our squat position at the bottom and from here as we start to drive up the knee is extending up and the quads are primarily taking over so from this position here in the squat or the step up would be another good example we're going to drive the leg and it's going to extend the foot away from the midline of the body and we're extending at the knee so the flexion is simply when the knee bends and shortens that gap in the back of the knee the extension is where the gap at the back of the knee becomes bigger okay so we've got extension and we've got flexion here Okay, so we've got plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Now, when we're going to be squatting down, we're looking more at the dorsiflexion. Okay, so typically the dorsiflexion is where the toe will come up. So we're kind of shortening the gap at the front of the ankle here that you can see. And then when we squat, essentially, as we're going down, you've got your feet set up, we're squatting down. You can see here that we're shortening the ankle of the uh, shorten the gap of the, the shin to the top of the foot here. So that angle here is shortening, which is dorsiflexion. And then when we're coming up, it's plantar flexion. There's not much in terms of plantar flexion, but it's just simply a case of looking at the ankle joint itself. We need to make you aware of it. Okay, that's what's going to be happening. So we have got the shins, we've got the calves that are working to plantar flex and dorsiflex the feet. So again, dorsiflexion is simply where the foot goes uh, dorsiflexion is where the toe goes up, plantar flexion is where the, the toe goes down, okay? So we've got dorsiflexion as we squat down, we've got plantar flexion as we drive on up in the squat. So we're going to look at the setup of the bar position, we're going to look at the setup of the feet, the setup of the kind of starting position, and then how we make our way down and what we're focusing on the way up. Now, in terms of the bar setup, I would always recommend that it's about chest height, probably just above, for guys, probably just above the nipples, um, about chest height is a good position to have, um, just simply for when we're unloading the bar off the rack and also when we're getting it back on. We want to try and avoid going up onto our tiptoes to get the rack, um, to get the bar back on the rack, so we want to kind of make sure it's easy when we're getting it off. 
Now in terms of hand position, some people will say they prefer wider, some people will say they prefer a lot narrower. The biggest thing is we're trying to make sure that the bar stays really kind of comfortable across the shoulders. We don't want it resting on the neck, we want it resting on kind of a shelf in the shoulders, which we'll talk about in a second. And then we're trying to make sure that everything's nice and gripping on the bar, okay? So I've got my hands, for me, I like it just about shoulder width, if not slightly a little bit wider. From here, I've got my hands in kind of like a neutral position. I'm gonna take my head underneath the bar and I've created that shelf here. Now I've got my feet about hip width, Give myself a nice stable support. I am only working with just the bar here, so it's gonna feel really comfortable. Now from here, I've got a slight flex in my knees, and then from here, I'm gonna stand up with the bar. You can see here I've created that room from the rack when I stand up, that I can safely step back and get myself set up into a position. Now I've got my feet about hip width, if not slightly wider. I've got my toes turned out at about 15 to 20 degrees. I've got my stomach nice and tight, and I've got my elbows flexed back ever so slightly. Okay, so make sure everything's nice and secure across the shoulders, keeping the stomach nice and tight from here. I'm gonna break simultaneously at the hips and the knees, lowering down. I'm pretty much gonna to go to about parallel, the thighs parallel with the floor, and then I'm gonna drive back up to the top. Okay, so nice and controlled, down, parallel to the floor, driving on back up, keeping it smooth, keeping my stomach engaged as I go down. So sometimes taking a big deep breath, holding the back nice and flat, nice and tight, holding the stomach tight as I brace, and then driving on back up. My head's in neutral, my spine's in neutral. You may see a slight rounding of the lower back into the hips as I get to the bottom of the movement. And that's just kind of roughly an indicator of your depth. From there, you can drive back up to the top. I'm gonna perform maybe 10 to 12 reps here, get myself warming up in that movement. When you're done, walking it back in and down. So there's a couple of errors that we typically see with people that are squatting. The first one I think would probably be a, the rack being too high or too low and they're having to squat too far down to, or kind of having to up onto their toes to kind of put the bar back. It's not really an error, it's more of a setup thing than an actual technical error. Um, when people get their hands on the bar again, it's, it's not so much a technical error, it's more of a, a positioning of the, the setup and they'll kind of have their hands too wide. It doesn't allow them to create a decent shelf and a lot of the time that's shoulder mobility. So make sure that your shoulders are mobile, that you can actually get yourself in the right position for your setup. It's just gonna make it a lot more easy as you're performing the movement and you can actually feel a lot more secure with the bar on your shoulders. In terms of actual technical faults, I think the first thing we always see, um, people will squat with their knees too far over their toes. Um, it's not necessarily like a, an issue because it's all anatomical for the person, so it's what they, they can do. Um, but it can place a lot of stress upon the knees rather than the actual quads themselves. Um, I know when people front squat or they goblet squat, their, their knees will go further over their toes simply because of where the weight position is. So you're trying to keep the center of gravity and the knees will go further over the toes and that's okay. But with a back squat, we're trying to limit how much um, forward flexion we get in the knees. Um, so in terms of setup, people will go through their positioning and they'll get set up and then we'll just see very much like the knees are very far forward over the toes and I can feel that there really pressing on the knees. So they'll kind of flex at the knees first, they'll sit very deep into their squat, their heels may, may come off the floor and that's driving a lot of pressure into the knees as they're squatting. So it's always something we want, we want to be wary of, that we don't break too much at the knees first. The knees don't go too far forward over the toes with the back squat, okay? The second one is the reverse of that, and people will get their set up position. They will take hold of the bar, and because they're trying to avoid their knees going too far forward, they tend to keep their butt back a lot more and their knees stable, and they end up going into like a good morning position. So as they're squatting down, they'll push their bum back, and then they'll squat back but you can see here, I've got a lot of forward flexion in that hip, and that's really putting a lot more pressure through the back, and I'll show that one again. So people will get set up, and instead of trying to let the knees flex forward, they push their hips back, and I go into this kind of good morning position here, and as I'm going down, I'm leaning very far forward. It's gonna allow how much the hips can get down, and it's gonna kind of reduce the activity that you'll get through the quads. So you'll see that when the butt goes back, it's more of a good morning, it's the hamstrings and glutes doing the work, as opposed to the quads. And uh, yeah, we want to try and avoid that as much as possible. 
So in terms of actual technique, we want to make sure that there's a good amount of hip and knee flexion at the same time as we're lowering down. Almost imagine a straight line from the bar through the, the middle of the foot, and that should be kind of where the bar path goes. So it's kind of straight down, straight up. Um, in terms of second or third common error that we tend to see will typically be the bar position. And there are two bar positions with the squat. There is a high bar position and a low bar position. High bar is simply resting kind of across the traps, whereas the, the mid to low bar position is a lot further down. Um, it does require a lot more shoulder mobility. But people will typically set the bar up across their neck, which is actually very dangerous. Um, some people will be trying to squat high bar and actually set it up in a low bar position and kind of vice versa. And that will just change the angle of the spine. So if you set it with a low bar position, you will actually lean forward a little bit more. And it's not that it's bad, it's just kind of a preference thing. So make sure that you're aware of where you should be setting up and kind of where you are and then as you're going down. Um, the third thing is if you struggle with ankle mobility, or fourth thing really, if you struggle with ankle mobility, actually place a couple of 1.25 kilo plates or like two and a half pound plates underneath your heels and it'll actually allow you to squat a little bit deeper. Okay, so while you work on your ankle mobility, you can actually pop, pop the plates underneath your heels and it'll allow you to squat a lot better. Right folks, so there you have it. That is this week's Training Tip Tuesday. It's a little bit different, so I hope you liked it, the audio with the lapel mic. I hope you liked the visual um, with a different setting. And let us know, post your comments down below, send them over to the, the podcast and let us know if you've got anything from it, um, what you got from it, and leave us a rating and review on the podcast. Like, comment, share, subscribe on the YouTube channel. And if you're just watching on social media, head over to those other two platforms, listen, watch, let us know what you thought and kind of what you've taken away from the video. So I did hope you learned something and uh, I'll see you all next week in the Training Tip Tuesday.